Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Hunter and this is your circular motion notes part one. Um, it might actually be all the notes depending on how fast I move. So as in uh, class, we started the circular motion lab and using the apparatus, you can see that um, I'm using a force to spin a stopper in a circle. And the only force that's really acting on this uh, circle or the stopper, excuse me, is called uh, centripetal force because it's the only force that is acting on the stopper to keep it rotating in a circle. Um, you can think about it as the same way as those rides at uh, the theme park where you're getting stuck to the wall. And really the only thing that is holding you to the wall is the wall because of Newton's laws. So in centripetal force, uh, imagine I have this circle here and I'm spinning the stopper in a circle and I'm going to spin it in a clockwise direction, right? So we're going to analyze the motion when the stopper gets to um, the bottom of the circle. Um, imagine this is a horizontal circle and I'm spinning it over my head just to make it simple, but that's hard to draw in a picture. So centripetal means center seeking. So we're actually going to jump into the first column. So centripetal force means center seeking. So the equation is Newton's second law, FC equals MAC. That's just Newton's second law but for a circle. So it says centripetal force equals mass times centripetal acceleration. So mass, which is in kg, and then acceleration, which as you know is meters per second squared, and then centripetal force is measured in newtons. So centripetal, the definition means center seeking, or pointing towards the center. which means that when we refer to remember force and acceleration are both vectors so since this is a vector and this is a vector it has a direction that direction is always pointing to the center of the circle please remember that it's pointing towards the center of the circle for the love of god it points towards the center of the circle the reason why i'm so adamant about that is because whenever a student says what's the direction of the central centripetal force they always put something wrong because centripetal force is always pointing towards the center. Centripetal acceleration is always pointing towards the center. So when they, whenever the stopper or wherever the stopper is on, like stopped on the circle, and if they said, what's the direction? It's always pointed to the, the center. So in this case, the center, the direction of the force would be north or up because that's where we're analyzing the stopper. And the direction of the acceleration, once again, centripetal acceleration, center seeking, it's pretty straightforward and easy, is also pointing north or up because it's always pointing towards the center of the circle. Now, velocity is a different case because of Newton's first law. An object in constant straight line speed and an object at rest will stay at rest if the forces are balanced. Right now, the forces aren't balanced. The only unbalanced force you have is the centripetal force pulling a stopper towards the center. However, if we were to let it go, and I'll demonstrate this in class, according to Newton's first law, it's going to fly in a straight line at a constant speed. So the direction of the velocity would be west because that's north and that's east. So since I'm spinning the stopper in a clockwise direction, it would, if I were to let it go at the bottom, it would fly out towards the rest and west. And remember, this is a horizontal circle. So that's really all you need to know in terms of some of the physics behind circular force. Now, as we discussed in class, the distance that this guy travels is the circumference of the circle because it goes all the way around in a circle. So distance in this case equals circumference. Circumference. 
And the equation for circumference, when you look in your reference table, is 2 pi r. For the love of God, please stop saying pi r squared. That's area. Get your lives together. So, <laughs> so uh, the equation for velocity, or average velocity, is distance over time. Well, our new distance is really 2 pi times the radius, or distance times uh, two pi, divided by the time. Now remember, the time is the time that it takes to go around one complete uh, circle. So velocity, V is velocity. That's meters per second. R is radius. Remember, this has to be in meters. And then T is time. But you have to remember, time is really the period, which, as we discussed in the lab, is the time for one revolution. So velocity is always tangent to the curve, which means it just goes in a straight line from where it, where it let go. So it's like straight line away from the circle is another way you could think it about it. Straight line away from the circle. And we know this because Newton's first law states, um, for the sake of time, an object at rest will stay at rest, an object in constant straight line speed will stay at constant straight line speed unless acted on by an unbalanced force. Uh, you should know that by now. You should. You can also write it in, and you have your previous notes to look at. I'm just trying to save time on the video. Now, centripetal acceleration is a little different than before, um, and I'm just going to give you the equation. I'm not going to worry about deriving it for you because it'll probably confuse you more. But a centripetal acceleration equals v squared over r, and this is in your reference table. And once again, um, v is just velocity. So I'm going to just clone this and drag it over. Or maybe not. So um, that is centripetal acceleration. And those are the only equations you guys need. And since you should be proficient with LEPA by now, um, it's, those equations are pretty straightforward to use. Uh, the, only, the only things that might get a little challenging is when they ask you to find the velocity of a circle because that equation is not on your reference table. That equation, because the region says, oh, well, they know the circumference of a circle, and they know that um, velocity is distance over time, then they assume that you know that V equals 2 pi R over T for a circle. So, uh, which I'll have you write that in your reference tables in class. So let's practice. So flip over the back page, and we're going to practice real quick. A motorcycle travels around a flat circular track. If the speed of the motorcycle is increased, the force required to keep it in the same circular path decreases, increases, or remains the same. So here's what's happening. I'm, on a, I'm traveling on a circular track, and I start going faster, right? In order to stay on the track or keep the same radius, what will I have to do with my force? So think about this. The basic equation is SC equals M. AC. And I know that AC equals V squared over R. So I just sub it in just like I've done before with the other uh, acceleration and velocity equation. So FC equals MV squared over R. So we have a direct relationship between velocity and force. And so it's my velocity squared, but they just said increase and it's a doubled or uh, tripled or whatever. So if V goes up, in order to keep the equation balanced, F has to go up, right? Because you can sub in numbers if you really wanted to. Like I could say, hey, V is 1. What does F have to be? F has to be 1 to match. Remember, law, uh, law of 1 for math, I can set everything else to 1. So M and R could be 1. And so if V is 1, F has to be 1. And then if V is 2, 2 squared is 4, F has to be 4, but once again, it increases. So once again, using the equation, we can uh, answer our question. The diagram shows a 2-kilogram model airplane attached to a wire. 
the airplane is flying clockwise in a horizontal circle of radius 20 meters at 30 meters per second. So we can pull out some inf important information. They give us the mass. Cool. Um, they give us the direction for its circular uh, motion. We care about that. Uh, they give us the radius. R is 20 meters, so R equals 20 meters. And they give us the velocity, V equals 30 meters per second. Let's see if we need it, but I'll tell you right now, maybe this problem we won't, but I know we will in the future. The centripetal force acting on the airplane at the position shown is directed toward point blank. Now, I'm gonna, you're gonna pause the video before I give you the answer, but choose your answer now and pause the video. Or pause the video and then choose your answer. Yeah, that's what I meant. So anyways, remember, centripetal is center seeking, pointing towards the center. Center seeking, pointing towards the center. So that should make it evident that the answer is C because it's centripetal force, it's pointing towards the center. They might have actually said, hey, um, is it pointing towards the south or north or east or west? And since it's going in a clockwise direction, it would be pointing south. Okay, and I think there's only one or two more problems to do. So now we have the same problem, but this time they're asking us to find what is the magnitude of the centripetal acceleration of the airplane. Well, they gave us the object's mass, which I believe was 2 kilograms. They gave us the radius, which was 20 meters, and they gave us the velocity, which was 30 meters per second. So we have F equals M. A C, but we don't have A, so we have to figure it out. So A equals V squared over R. So then, uh, just doing math real quick, I get 30 squared over the radius, which is 20. And then all of that is multiplied by the mass of 2. And how am I doing that? F equals M A C. So F really equals mv squared over r. So then I'm saying centripetal force equals 2 times 30 squared divided by 20. So let's see, that, that cancels out. becomes 10. And then 30 squared, what is that? 900. So 900 divided by 10. So I should get, what, 90 meters per second squared if I'm doing my math correctly off the top of my head, and that gives you the answer of four. And that concludes your centripetal force notes.